Guys, what's up? It is Doug with Trigger King here and here with another Trigger King Tech. Thank you to all who left comments and, uh, you know, we're discussing that retro video. Um, that was really interesting to see your perspectives on it. And, you know, after doing that one, I wanted to talk about another topic here that's, I guess, kind of top of mind. Uh, it's the Lozy LMT. It's crazy how time flies because the Lozy LMT, actually our video review of it went live about two years ago, just over two years ago as of right now. And uh, they really started to, to hit the scene that spring, like late winter and that spring in 2021. And so we've had a while now with the LMTs out there in the wild. A lot of people have them. A lot of people have run them, have raced them. And I wanted to talk about them. So this year's my LMT. This actually, this truck was the one that we used for the review two years ago. Uh, albeit this one's been heavily modified. I'll talk about that here in a minute just to show you some of the mods you can do on these things. But let's start off by talking about the stock LMT and what it's meant to the solid axle monster truck world. So really ever since its release, the LMT has dominated the uh, the solid axle monster truck scene here, at least insofar as the more modern style pro mod style truck. Uh, this is, of course, in comparison to the retro style monster truck, which we talked about in our last video, and that, the uh, to me, a cloudbuster still rules the roost. You know, in Trigger King, this is really the platform now that uh, kind of dominates the pro mod platform. I mean, we still have other kinds of trucks that race and that do well there, but when you're talking freestyle, like hard bashing these trucks, the Lozy LMT is unquestionably the king of it. Now you do need to do a couple mods to get the most out of your truck here. So let's talk about it stock because stock, this really, this truck, it's, it's kind of hard to compare this almost to other solid axle monster trucks because it really is, you know, quite a bit above them. You have the retro style clod, which is really kind of something else, right? That truck is slow and plodding out of the box. So a real like RC basher, unless you want that old school feel, you don't really want a clod. So really the only thing you have to compare it to are things like the Axial SMT-10, which the Axial SMT-10 is still quite nice, but out of the box, the LMT just kind of blows it away, frankly. LMT, you can run 3S on brushless. You know, relatively no problem. You might bust some axle parts or something like that, the plastic axle parts if you go really hard, but for the most part, you know, the drivetrain can handle it. Now, while it's a capable truck out of the box and your average hobbyist, you're gonna have fun with it out of the box. As far as like hard bashing or as we do race them, there are some things you do need to do to these trucks out of the box. They're not perfect. Um, we actually stopped racing them in the spec class. This last year was the last we're doing the spec class. We are going to have them just combined now with ProMod trucks because really ProMod has had so many of them come in there now and they do fantastic in the class. It just made sense to do that. And the thing is when we were racing them first, it was a spec class, the LMT spec class out of the box. and. The steering and the tires are just really, they're, they're not very fun to race that way because the steering out of the box, that servo is too sluggish. It doesn't really do the job very well. And you combine that with the tires, those, those hard compound BKT style tires. And as far as racing goes, you're gonna be slip and slide and the truck kind of just goes wherever it wants. So it's not great for that. But if you add a nice servo and you add nice tires on it, that really wakes it up. Here's my heavily modified at LMT, guys. This has been set up for racing and freestyling, competition style, so I always forget the model on this. This is a Spectrum S6250 servo. I love this servo. I'm actually using the stock servo saver on it, um, but I've got Treel everything here. These are Treel axles. You can see the housings. These are really, really nice quality. Treel wheelie bar on it. Um, this really, really helps with the axles and everything. I actually never broke a housing um, in freestyle or anything else. I know some guys were doing that with plastic housings if you get really crazy. I never have, but I upgraded to the Trio stuff. Um, I love it for reasons other than just durability. I'll talk about that in a moment here. But I also have this Bowhaus RC, uh, it, the, uh, the battery tray here, which drops the, uh, drops the center of gravity on it. And I also have an electronics tray here that drops the center of gravity too. It kind of uh, puts everything down low in the chassis here. So you combine that with the um, these machine parts, the trail stuff, it really keeps that weight low. This truck is planted. I still have the stock electronics in this one. Um, when you're running it on three cell, this system, I actually don't have a problem with it. Uh, on two cell, sometimes it can get kind of coggy on the low end, um, like a sensor list brushless can do. But um, when I put this on 3S, I think it's great on power. And actually it really cuts down the cogging for me because it's got the voltage there. So it doesn't really have the issues with it, but man, I love this truck. It carves through the corners because it's got so much weight down low on it here. Um, I've not had a problem with the shocks either ripping out. I know that was a big thing for a while. Guys talking about um, on jumps, you know, when these, if you don't have um, some kind of like a limiting strap, that when the suspension drops down like that, you're gonna have the shock shafts pull out. 
Um, I know it can happen. It hasn't happened here. I'll probably put some limiting straps on mine just because they look cool next year. But over the last season, I didn't have any problems with it whenever I was racing or freestyling with this truck. Now, when you get rid of those Lozy LMT tires, there's a few things you can do. The tires and wheels, I should say. It's got 17 millimeter hexes on it. Uh, this one does right now too. I was using the split wheel, the J Concepts, um, the aggressor wheel, which was the split, uh, you know, the diameter from the inside and outside, the short course style wheel that's similar to how the actual, uh, the LMT comes. I'm actually gonna wind up though for this season, I'm gonna put 12 millimeter hexes on it. And the reason I don't have 12 millimeters on it now is because they've been back ordered a while, but I'm gonna put the uh, 12 millimeter hexes on it. And I'm actually gonna be running these. These are these new, the J Concepts Firestorm, the, uh, the racer tire. These ones, these, uh, boy, this tread pattern looks wicked on it. These actually have the new closed cell foams from J Concepts too. I'm gonna do a separate video talking about these tires in closed cell foams, the uh, Slam Tech inserts. I'm gonna do something different on that, but that's what tires this one's going to get, the tires and wheels for the next season. The R Pro Modified Class, the uh, the LMT just, it uh, you know it really dominates, at least insofar as it's becoming the de facto platform to use. Now there are other platforms competitive racing with it, but as far as the trucks you're seeing come out, that's what I mean with the, the domination. Um, you're just seeing so many of them, the influx of them. Parts are so easy to get for these trucks too, versus like a modified clod. Uh, as far as like the sport mod goes with the brush trucks, because this guy is pretty heavy, um, I don't know that I've seen an LMT. I'm sure there have been some sport mod ones this year, but I can't think of any offhand. You normally though see these for brushless trucks, not like the brush trucks. The Axial SMT-10, because it's lighter, that's actually a great sport mod platform. I'll wind up talking about that when I do a pro mod and sport mod video. Just an update on those. But the trucks that do our organized freestyle, they are the de facto platform to use now. They're just so heavy duty. And normally the only real breakage you see on them is every once in a while you'll see somebody pull out like a link. Normally that's where uh, the, the joint, where the, uh, the four link joins up the axle, you'll see somebody pull out one of those because that's where the energy has to go. Now if you're running Treel parts like me, uh, some other guys run Treel, I know Josh Rhodes, he runs Treel on uh, his LMTs. And problem with the Treel stuff or any machine parts like that is just know that uh, if you do have that kind of real blunt force issue when you're bashing, that is going to go somewhere to your, somewhere else that forces you know what, what's it say you're only as strong as your weakest component so just beware when you start bulletproofing the axle housings and everything like that uh it's going to find a way to go somewhere but you can always just bulletproof that normally it's the drive shaft that's actually why i recommend leaving the stock drive shafts i feel like they're decent enough um i haven't thrown a drive shaft but i've seen them break under you know extreme use versus something else breaking. I personally would rather break those drive shafts, you know, all day versus breaking something, the transmission or another part like that. But even if that were to happen, the LMT is pretty easy to work on. So there's no real issue there. And again, parts availability, it's really easy. Now most local hobby shops have parts for it. And that's amazing because you just can't do that or couldn't do that with a clod buster. Uh, with an Axial SMT-10, you can find parts pretty much everywhere too. But it is nice to see that you can run this truck really hard and go into your local hobby shop and uh, get parts on Monday. You know, break it on Sunday, buy the parts on Monday. And of course, if you don't have a local hobby shop, you can get everywhere. Uh, everyone's got parts for these things online. And the aftermarket is very, very hot, you know, because I, again, I'm using the Trio stuff. There are other manufacturers out there. Um, so it's just a super hot aftermarket for the LMT. Hey guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tech video on the LMT. Wanted to do a bit of an update since we haven't really talked about the LMT for a couple years since the review, but um, you know, our review unit, even though it's heavily modified here, this truck is still going strong. Uh, looking forward to further modifications for the next year, uh, you know, for the season in 2023. But um, the LMT has really come on strong and it's here to stay in the solid axle monster truck community. It's really, really popular and it's great for the bashers as well. If you just want a truck, you know, to get a ready to run monster truck to go have fun like the big boys because the LMT does handle and react very similar to how a full scale monster truck does. You can go out and do that with the LMT and uh, it's a relatively strong platform too. So you shouldn't be breaking parts left and right. And if you do, you can go to your hobby shop or anywhere online and they stock parts for it everywhere. So it's no issue that way. The LMT is a big winner and it's awesome that uh, it's been so ingrained in the hobby just in the, you know, the two short years it's been out. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any idea for other Trigger King Tech videos, I'd love to talk about some questions you guys might have or any other questions here. If we get out of maybe I'll just do a Q&A. Uh, general questions video. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you found this informative. Let me know below. What do you think about the LMT? What do you think about the platform in general? And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.